Hey everyone, I'm Diana Davison, and welcome to this week in Media Meltdowns Caused by Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. On November 17th, Tabitha Southey was published in McLean's Magazine, calling Maverick Professor Dr. Jordan Peterson the stupid person's smart man. That she scribbled this bit of kindergarten nonsense isn't surprising. The more concerning part is that McLean's both published it and made it an editor's pick. Now let's have a look at what McLean's thinks is the best that they have to offer. In regards to Peterson's refusal to engage in compelled speech, specifically the endless range of preferred pronouns, Southey responds with, but since calling a certain University of Toronto professor Jordan P. Hederson is apparently the only thing standing between us and non-stop collectivist potato farming, I'll do my part for the resistance. She goes on to call him more names. Mistress Peterson, Dr. Jordan Eggman, Dr. Pettison, Jordan Petersoni, Jordan Buttercup Peterson, Peterson Shine, and J. Pete the Beat. Now the biggest mistake in Southie's article isn't her playground insults, it's that she compares her intellectual prowess with Dr. Peterson. Instead of taking his self-authoring course, she suggests, pro tip, just take a personality test from the back of an issue of Glamour. You'll only be out about five bucks and you might find a free perfume sample. The key to understanding Miss Southey's intolerance is outlined here. She says, spend half an hour on his website, sit through a few of his interminable videos, and you realize that what he has going on for him, the niche he has found, he never seems to say no, where he could instead say cognizant of. Now, anyone who's familiar with Dr. Peterson's work knows that you can't watch a few of his videos in half an hour. In fact, the one she specifically mentions is two and a half hours long. And that is what separates his niche from McLean's. Jordan Peterson has found a way to speak to his target audience, make videos longer than the attention span of the average modern journalist. In fact, it takes McLean's two articles to pull off a single poorly executed insult. They did a double feature published on the same day in another editor's pick article about Dr. Peterson, written by Stephen Maher, describing him as the irritating University of Toronto psychology professor who has become a star by producing tedious YouTube videos, complaining about people trying to silence him. Are you noticing a theme here? There is a definite attention deficit disorder problem going on. Hint to Mr. Maher. The videos that made Peterson famous are the ones in between the attempts to silence him. You know, the ones that take an hour or more than two hours to listen to. Now, I discovered that Maher's article actually makes more sense if you read it backwards. You should try it. Start at the last paragraph, then work your way to the top. It's quite fascinating. But I want to look at a different oddity in the first two paragraphs. Unfortunately, it is time for people outside the academy to stand up for the free speech rights of Jordan Peterson. Presumably it's unfortunate because Dr. Peterson's academic freedom is being threatened. He clarifies, The well-meaning people who try to silence him are making a big mistake and need to listen to people outside the ivory tower. And this would seem right and good, except he then goes on to bemoan the extensive crowdfunding Peterson has obtained on the internet. You know, people outside the ivory tower. Mahi describes Peterson's fan base as such. Peterson, who makes tens of thousands of dollars a month fundraising online, became famous in basements around the world when he spoke out against a University of Toronto policy requiring professors to use non-traditional pronouns like Z to address non-gender binary students. How further from the ivory tower can basement dwellers get? Now these kindergarten insults might make us wonder if McLean's is also including a coloring book and crayons with purchase, but the better question is why two featured journalists couldn't form a coherent criticism to be made against Professor Peterson's arguments. They seem more focused on the money. Tabitha Southey also notes Peterson's crowdfunding. He currently has legions of fans hanging on his every YouTubed word. He's now hauling in around USD 50,000 a month through crowdfunding. Well, not bad for a bunch of basement dwellers, huh? Now, Southie almost hit on a valid area of inquiry when she commented on the cancellation of Dr. Peterson's plan 
to launch a website that would identify postmodernist bullshit courses in university. She came so close, and if she hadn't been filled with jealousy and infantile rage, she might have made a good point. It's my understanding that one of the reasons Dr. Peterson has generated so much crowdfunding is to grant him academic freedom, so that if the university fires him, he can't be silenced. In fact, it was Peterson's expectation from the beginning that he would be fired for continuing to speak out and challenging the corruption of our society and institutions by what he rightfully calls a murderous ideology. Nothing Dr. Peterson says about Marxism, pronouns, or political correctness should result in dismissal, but he has been telling people from the beginning of his online career to not bother going to university anymore because universities are now a scam. Telling people not to use the product your employer sells is probably grounds for dismissal. But more to the point, working for an employer you hate is also not very good for your health. When Peterson started down this path, he had an epiphany about how many hundreds of thousands of people he could reach on the internet instead of just the few hundred in his classroom. He talked about starting an alternative to the university that would provide a better quality education without turning students into debt slaves. These are very exciting ideas, and I want to see him pull it off and help that happen in whatever way I can. I was very disappointed when a website launch was canceled two days after his last debate. The website proposed to help students avoid courses that spread anti-knowledge, the idea being to cut off the supply to the professors who are indoctrinating our youth into postmodern, neo-Marxist, identity politics-driven collectivism. Now, obviously, there are benefits to maintaining a tenured position as a university professor, but accomplishing great things takes a leap of faith. Over half a million subscribers have faith in you, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. One of the things that forces people to attend these cesspits of indoctrination currently called universities is that employers require it. We need an alternative. I don't think you can fix the university. You have to replace it now from the ground up. We can also look at changing what employers are looking for when they hire. In a way, I'm wondering if leaving the university might help you get to the next step. Change needs to happen, and it needs to happen soon. No one has made a better argument for that than you, Dr. Peterson. Knowledge does not reside in the university. It resides in the people who pass on that knowledge and in the people who receive it. Postmodernists don't believe in facts, but facts continue to exist nonetheless. We're approaching an era where you need a bachelor's degree just to work at McDonald's, and that's about all it qualifies you for. Well, that or writing at McLean's.